There are five ways for the world to end. Spoiler alert. <laughs> One, the big crunch. As you know, the universe is expanding, but... Sorry, am I going too fast? In case you didn't know, the universe is expanding. Why do you know that? But seriously, read a book sometime. But anyway, let's say the elastic snaps, the worm turns, the universe begins to contract. It's getting smaller, hotter, denser, and it will make a wrapper in a microwave until it's basically just a, a very compact inferno. So that's one. Okay, two. The big freeze. That does what it says on the heat deck. Everything becomes the same temperature. The universe is uniformly cold, dead, and empty. And nothing interesting ever happens again. Number three. The big change. Dark energy. Mm, it keeps growing. It's pulling the universe apart. Until one day, a bubble of lower energy shows up. <laughs> it expands at the speed of light. <laughs> Rewriting all the rules of chemistry and destroying humans, planets, and stars, etc. In at number four, if the amount of dark energy increases too fast, we might get a big rip. <laughs> Which is pretty much what. Have you seen Star Trek? Uh, it's kind of like that. Atom shatter! Ah! Ah! that any of you are able to understand any of this. No, except in the most rudimentary terms. Most of you probably don't even know if any of this is true or not. Yes? No? It's okay. That is okay. That is fine. You are doing your best. <laughs> and the thing is, it feels true. Doesn't it? The idea that all of this will end in a catastrophe over which we have no power. That is a given. That is a familiar and a strangely comforting fact. That be it fire, ice, cosmic menopause, atomic obliteration, or a, a virus, perhaps. A, a contagion spreading too fast for us to control, or an ice flow melting too quickly, a shortage of food, a war over water, a bad day on the golf course for a sociopath with access to the nuclear codes. <laughs> yeah. Or, for example, for example, number five, one day, you're at home, <laughs> and you're cooking soup. I mean, not from scratch or anything, you know, but you've got the cart open, feeling pretty fucking pleased with yourself. And as the soup starts to bubble, you become aware that your blood has been replaced by battery acid. And <laughs> Oh, and this is a disturbing thought, but it, it's a familiar one. You've had this thought before. Not many times, in fact. Only in the past, you've always been able to regard it with um, kind of like a, a, a healthy skepticism. Like the way you look at crop circles or the charitable gestures of millionaires. But what's different today? is that you can no longer tell the difference between this piece of information and any other piece of information. It enters your brain in the same font as any other fact. Now that, that is a toaster. The kettle is metal. You live in Geneva. Angelica Houston speaks fluent French. The human immunodeficiency virus cannot be spread by mosquitoes. Eskenite is a mineral. Anthrax is a disease. 
Your heart is a pump, your battery acid. You are cooking soup for your son. Your son is eight. Your son is upstairs in bed with a cold. And that is when you realize uh, somehow the seal of your body has broken. And this acid, this acid is no longer contained by your skin. And veins and arteries and flesh is leaching through the pads of your fingers. And it's in your saliva, the moisture in your eyes, the sweat on your back and neck. I have a taste like a wetness, burning, corroding, contaminating everything. You, you, oh, there's black smears on the spoon. That's on the bowl, on the tray, to take to your son who is eight, who's upstairs in bed with a cold, with a temperature, with a fever, caused by a rot. And suddenly, you understand, you are the rot. You are the disease. <laughs> and, and, and then there's a sound. It was like a click. Like the click of a catch and suitcase. Oh, and there is relief. There is relief because there is order. Uh, whatever else, there is order. <laughs> ah, and, and so you turn off the gas and leaving your coat and your wallet, your mobile phone behind. You, you walk out of the room.